It's time now for Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter, coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. International Christian Fellowship is a Bible-believing church that preaches the uncompromised Word of God and prays for you and your needs. Pastor Peter is bringing the message of salvation, healing, and deliverance throughout the world. Now, here is Pastor Peter. Hello, praise the Lord, and welcome to Jesus is the Answer. This is Pastor Peter. I'm going to pray for you and your needs. And I believe that our God is going to supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Please call that number uh, on the screen and somebody will pray for you and your needs. In the end of the program, I'll be praying for you and your needs. Please tell somebody to tune into this program. We are studying about Jesus' healing ministry. And we believe that Jesus Christ, whatever the miracle He did, we can do also according to the Word of God. We read in that St. John chapter 14 verse 12. Okay, today we are going to study about the one lady. She is not Jewish, she is heathen. In Matthew it says she is Canaan, Canaanite. And Mark it says she is a Greek. The same thing. Now this lady somehow heard about Jesus and she decided to come for healing for her daughter. Her daughter was a young daughter and she was demon possessed. So it was difficult for her to bring the daughter. I don't know how long she traveled but she is coming from the coast of uh, tire and so Jesus Christ was coming from the same area so she followed Christ and she started crying and what she said O son of David please cast out the demon from my daughter and she was crying Jesus heard it but didn't say a word to her and he kept on going he had the invitation in some house he was going. So now he is going and didn't say anything to her and so the disciples start telling Jesus this lady is bugging us. She's keep on shouting and crying and making a lot of noise. Why don't you do something or tell her to go away? But Jesus Christ never send some people empty-handed. But here Jesus Christ was teaching a lesson to his disciples. St. John chapter 1 verse 11 it says, Jesus Christ came to his own and they received him not. Jesus Christ was telling his disciples, God the Father sent Jesus Christ to the lost sheep of Israel. And when he sent all these disciples two by two, told them not to go to any other country, but just go to the Israeli people only. What he was trying to say, God is giving, God is giving them first chance because they were called children of God. And the heathen people, Jewish people used to treat them like dogs. And so they had no value because they were worshipping heathen gods. Now when this lady followed Christ and the disciples said, send her away, that's the time Jesus said, do you know we should not take the children's bread and give it to the dogs? That means he was saying, I came to the children of Israel and just like God fed the manna from heaven, the heavenly bread, and Jesus Christ was the bread of life. So he said, I have come to Israeli people. But the lady heard it. But she was not feeling bad or angry or disappointed. As she fell on Jesus' feet and she said, listen, when the master eats on the table and some of the crumbs falls on the ground, and if they have little puppies, 
they will eat those crumbs. So consider me as a puppy dog and give me just the crumb. I'm not asking the full bread. And Jesus saw her faith. And he said, you have great faith. Go home. Your daughter is already set free from the demon possession. The lady didn't argue. She just believed what Jesus said. And I was surprised. She was saying, oh, son of David, do something for my child. I thought, how she heard this? You know, the blind man was calling the same way. Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. And people start saying, stop, don't cry. Nobody's listened to you. And he starts crying more, louder and louder. And Jesus says, bring that man here. So she heard or uh, saw that story. She might be following Christ, looking for a chance. So she memorized what the other people said. And she believed he is the son of David. He is going to be king one day. He has the power and authority. He can say the word and my daughter will be healed. And exactly what she believed, she received. She went home and saw her daughter lying on the bed, sleeping quietly. That means that that girl was never able to sleep on the bed. She might be running like a crazy, giving a lot of hard time and not listening to anyone. But now she was calm and the demon was out of her life. See what Jesus Christ can do. Sometimes people might be thinking Jesus was prejudiced. Jesus was not prejudiced. He was doing the right thing. And the lady was not angry. She got her blessings. The word of God says, I want to prove it to you, Jesus was not prejudiced. The word of God says, he said to his disciples, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And when you fill with the Holy Spirit, you start doing the signs and wonders and preaching the word of God from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and that uttermost part of the world. So he wanted to say, start from your hometown. The same way when you get saved. Some people said, oh, I go to India or I go to uh, Africa or some other country to preach the gospel. What Jesus Christ said, what the word of God says, he says, when you get saved, you believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved and your household will be saved. It's your responsibility to tell your household about Jesus Christ, not to go somewhere, somewhere else. When your children are hungry, and when your children and your wife and your family suffering, you cannot leave your family and go and try to help some other country people or neighbor's children or neighbor's wife. That's what Jesus Christ was saying. You have to have a responsibility. You do help your children and don't take children's bread and give it to the dogs. Today people, they love dogs and cats more than their children. If you hurt the dog, you go to jail. Or you hurt any uh, animal or anybody, you go to jail. But they abort the babies in the mother's womb and they don't go to jail. And they provide, even the, the girl is in the high school or school, they don't tell mom and dad and they can abort the child. The point I'm making, Jesus Christ was saying that your children are the important things in your life. When God has given you children, take care of them. And that's what Jesus Christ was saying in this chapter. So if somebody is listening, all heathens are dogs or cats or something like that. No, your responsibility for your children first. That's what Jesus Christ was saying. Now here we see this lady's child got healed. Even though Jesus didn't go to her house, she didn't bring the child. Jesus spoke the word. Jesus is the son of God. He is God himself. And he has the power and his word has power and life. God can do the same thing. There was a one lady who came from another place like a Trinidad or so. And she came and she said to us in the church, 
my, I have two daughters, and maybe one of her is dem one of one of my daughter may be a demon possessed, and so I could not bring them here. Could you do something? I said, well, give me the handkerchief or some oil, and when you go to your hometown, just put the handkerchief on her head and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And I prayed and gave it to her, and I got the report. Both of her daughters were doing good. What happened? Same way Jesus Christ spoke the word, I spoke the word, and the lady was, the, those demons were gone. So there is a power in the word of God. And if you use the same power, God can do the signs and wonders and miracles. I saw one time, one lady was demon possessed, and I was having the meeting in that town. And she was dancing around in front of me and losing her hair. And so somebody told me she has a demon. And I cast that demon out of her in the name of Jesus. She fell on the floor. And she got up within five minutes. And she said to me, I had seven demons. And she told me what place and how she got it. But I said, how do you feel now? She said, I am free. And she believed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And in that town, when I finished the meeting, several people were baptized and she was one of them. So what I'm trying to say, God has given us same power, same authority. You, when I heard, there was a lady called Mary Magdalene. She had seven demons. Jesus cast out her seven demons. So he has given us the same power. We can do the same. There is nothing impossible with God. We have to trust in God and God has given us power to, to pray for people so they can be healed. And if somebody is uh, demon possessed, the demon can be cast out. We have much more power than demon. But if somebody is not born again, is not saved, and try to cast out the demon for making money, you know there are seven sons of Siva. They came and start casting out the devils. And, and the devil asked them a question. They said, oh, Peter does this. I'm sorry, Paul does this, so we can do the same. The devil says, I know Paul and I know Jesus. Who are you? And devil harassed them and they were naked and wounded and ran for their life. So, demon will not cast by the people who are living unclean and unholy life. Devil only will cast out in the name of Jesus. There was a man, uh, he used, man of God, he used to go to other countries and he said, cast demon in your na uh, name of your God, Rama or Allah or Buddha or anybody. If it doesn't happen, I'll cast him in the name of Jesus. And so the point I'm making in the name of Jesus, miracles happens today. So God is a miracle working God. There was a man working in the RTO office and he was a treasurer. He was a Hindu man, highly educated, and two of his friends brought him Monday morning to the church. And I was just praying. And this man said, these two people said, this is our boss and uh, he got demons somehow and he falls down and fiends comes from his mouth and uh, the devil is tormenting him. So I said to this man, look at me. And so he said, I cannot look at you. So I said, say the blood of Jesus. He said, I cannot say that word. So I knew. Devil is afraid of the blood of Jesus. Devil is afraid of name of Jesus. So I said to those people, leave him alone and let me pray for him. I took authority in the name of Jesus. I laid hand on his head and say in the name of Jesus, I command this evil spirit to out of his life. And he fell on the floor. And then a few minutes later he stood. He said there was something or somebody twisting me and came out of me and I saw going through this door. And after that, he had no problem. 
I said, who did it? He said, Jesus did it. Can you, say blood, can you say the blood of Jesus? He said, blood of Jesus. Can you say praise the Lord? He said, praise the Lord. What happened? Instantly, when the demon was out, this man was set free. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he says, The greater one is within us And then what is in the world. In the world, the devil is the king of the world. But God has given us a mighty power than any demonic forces. I can tell you many, many more things. We will be, we will be doing another program and I'll tell you much more other experiences. But I believe God has called us with a definite high calling. And once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you have power. Even though you are just born again today, you have much more power than the devil. I just said it. If you are if you're a child of God, you are greater than any enemy in the world. Enemy has to flee in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful. Jesus Christ just said the word and that lady believed. She never argued. She said yes and she went. So people today are born again believers. They do not have faith like this lady. If they have faith like her, then we would not have any problem. Each and every believer can live a victorious life. People are saying there is no devil. The word of God says there is a devil. There is an evil power and there is a good power. God is the whole authority and the God has the most power or greater power than any enemy in the world. God has given us that weapon. When you use it for the glory of God and you will see miracles will be happening. Somebody say, oh, I don't know how to cast them demons. I didn't know either. I didn't know how to cast out the demons. One day one lady came to the church and the pastor put, her, put his hand on her head and the pastor was thrown out 5-10 feet and the lady was uh, sitting there. And the lady went home and I asked the pastor what happened. He said, oh, that kind of demon, we need a fasting and praying. So I learned we have to fast and pray. So by the grace of God, I'm fasting every Sunday. I should not be bragging, but every Sunday I fast. Not only that, any person calls me for prayer in their house, I go with the fasting and prayer. And so I, I was walk, walking on the street and this lady, same lady who had the demon possessed, she says, Oh, Brother Peter, Pastor Peter, come to my house. I was a little bit scared. I thought, why she is calling? So I went there and she said, Your pastor was not able to cast my demon from me. Can you do it? I said, Well, Jesus is the one cast the demon out. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to pray and the demon will be gone. And God gave me that faith and I just touched her head and in the name of Jesus I rebuked the devil and said get out of her life and never come back. The lady fell on the floor and then she got up later on she said Pastor Peter I'm free. The devil is out. I'm completely healed by the power of God. She got saved. Her husband got saved and her children got saved and I baptized them. What I'm trying to say, there is a power in the name of Jesus and that was in my early ministry. I didn't have too much experience. Now by the grace of God I'm serving the Lord since 1956. Hundreds and thousands of demons and different kinds of different healings and miracles God is doing through this ministry. Our God is alive. He does miracles today. We have to just Take it by faith and start doing it. I'm going to give you a chance. What I'm going to do, first of all, as I said earlier, you cannot heal any sick person. You cannot cast any demons if you are influenced by demon. That means if you are doing unholy thing, you are not born again, you are not saved, you cannot do anything. People are trying it. 
different religious people, they are saying we can do the same thing. But it's not happening. I was in India and uh, they were all Hindus and Muslim temples and things like that. And the people were coming from their temple and they were asking me to pray for them. One lady came and she had the devil, her God in the cabinet, actually wall, there has a hole, and they put the God there and give them oil and burn their incense. And so she came and stood in the prayer line. And God told me, not touch, don't touch her. And so I told her to stay away, let the other people come. And I prayed for everybody. And then I start thinking, why God told me not to pray for this lady? So I say, sister, could you tell me what did you do when you came here? She said, I promised my God that I'm going to go to Pastor Peter and he's going to pray for me. And when I get better, I'm going to come and give me, put more oil in the lamp and put some more incense and worship you more. And I say, sister, if your God doesn't heal you and you came here that Jesus should heal you. When Jesus heals you, do you go back to that God who doesn't have, who doesn't have mouth to talk? He cannot hear. He is just the idol, maybe silver or gold. And you want to give glory to him? What the Bible says? Bible says, I will not share my glory with any others. Glory goes to Jesus Christ. I never take credit that I heal anybody. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the answer for our problems. I'm going to pray for you. First of all, give your heart to Jesus Christ. When you invite Jesus Christ into your life, then he gives you power, supernatural power, because then you will be the child of God. Let's pray first, and then I'm going to pray for your sickness and disease. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Please forgive all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Touch me, Lord, and heal me for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Once you believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and once you confess your sins to Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, forgotten. There is no record of your sins. You are a born again child of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 he says, If you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are a new born again child of God. All the sickness, disease, all your bad habits and everything will go away. Some people say, oh, I'm afraid to give up smoking, give up drinking, give up all these bad habits, and I'm living in sin. It's impossible to live a clean and holy life. You don't have to worry. Once Christ comes in, the devil goes out, the evil goes out, and your life will be cleansed. The Word of God says when your life is cleansed and the demon is out, He's looking for some place. And if he doesn't get some place, he said, hey, I'll go back where the place is completely clean and holy. And he comes back and makes the miserable seven times more miserable life. So what I'm trying to say, once you're born again, child of God, don't allow that demonic forces to come to you. Resist the devil. The word of God says he will, he will flee from you. We have the power in the name of Jesus and he will go. Your habits, you don't have to worry. You will have no craving for any bad habits because he gives you supernatural power to say no. So what I'm trying to say, now you are a free man. Jesus Christ said, ye shall know the truth and truth shall set you free. Free from what? Free from sickness, disease, free from all kinds of evil thoughts and evil ideas and all the bandages. You are a free man or free woman. Serve the Lord, go to church, read the Bible, pray, and find a good fellowship where the full gospel is preached. You will be never be the same. Now I'm going to pray for you. Tell somebody, call somebody, say, hey, come and listen. As I pray, you believe. If that lady 
the heathen lady came and she believed what Jesus said. He just said, go home. Your daughter is already set free. And she believed and she received it. So when I pray, you believe the same way and you will get the result. Let's pray. Whatever your disease are, I don't know, God knows. But I'm going to pray and God is going to touch you and heal you. Let's pray right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, please touch me and heal me for the glory of God. Lord Jesus, I'm suffering for this disease and this sickness for many, many years. But I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, He's the healer, He's the deliverer. Touch me and heal me completely for the glory of God. In Jesus' name I pray and I call it done. Now, you might have a headache. You had a, some kind of body ache. You had a heart problem. You had some internal organ were not working. Or you were not able to raise your hand or you were not able to walk or you were not able to hear properly, or you are not able to see. Whatever your problem was, we put it in the name of Jesus. And we prayed in the name of Jesus. I believe that God has already touched you and healed you and delivered you and set you free. Just exercise your faith. What you do, start doing the things which you were not able to do before. And once you start doing it, sometime immediately healing comes. And sometimes gradually healing comes. But don't give up. The word of God says pray without ceasing. We already prayed. But if you are not delivered, uh, next program, again I am going to pray for you. But I believe that God has started a good work. And he is going to complete it. God is not a man, he can fail. Jesus never fails. So we prayed to Jesus and he already heard our prayer. Don't doubt. Just say, I'm healed. Once you are healed, you're going to pray for somebody else. And you're going to see the result. Our God is a miracle working God. Just practice what you learn. And I believe you will be never be the same. Now, may God richly bless you and use you more and more for His glory. Amen and Amen. You've been listening to Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter of International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. If this program has been a blessing to you, please let Pastor Peter know. Write to Pastor Peter at Post Office Box 5033, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19111. Again, that's Pastor Peter, Box 5033, Philadelphia, PA, 19111. Pastor Peter and his prayer partners are taking your calls right now. The number is 215-342-3759. Again, that's 215-342-3759. You can also send email to icfprayerline at comcast.net. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., International Christian Fellowship has a worship service with communion and healing service. You can find more information at www.internationalchristianfellowship.org. This is a faith ministry. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. And please remember to tune in next time for Jesus is the Answer.